A divided campus, a week of turmoil, and a move to diversity plus unity. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jim Reek. And I'm Brittany Pieper. After numerous walkouts, MU announced its next step in trying to create a more diverse campus today. This morning, MU named Chuck Henson as the new interim vice chancellor for inclusion, diversity, and equity. KOMU 8's Tyler Murray is here to tell us what he had to say about his upcoming plans. MU announced around 10.30 this morning Chuck Henson would be the new interim vice chancellor for inclusion, diversity, and equity. Henson is also an associate dean with the MU Law School, which is just steps away from today's grad student walkout. Henson says he could not comment on whether or not he could meet the demands from concerned student 1950, but he says a lack of faculty of color is a problem he looks to improve on. He says the problem is nationwide in issues he says takes a long time to change. We need to focus on the process. Uh, and once we have a good process in place, then the results will follow. Henson says this is a time for reflection and healing. He says he hopes to be a part of that healing process. Emmy Provost Garnett Stokes says she is looking forward to working with Henson. He says he expects the process for a permanent position to take roughly six to nine months. But he says he is not thinking about the future and only thinking about what he can do now. Gratitude for the opportunities that have been given to me, my first job um, at the Attorney General's office here, and then at the law school here, and then this opportunity to serve, and that's all I'm interested in. When I wrapped up speaking with Henson, I asked him if there would ever be full diversity on MU's campus. He told me he isn't sure he will be alive to see that day. Meanwhile, an interim UM system president has not been named yet, but an hour ago, the UM system announced it will hold a meeting tomorrow at 4.30 to discuss personnel matters. The announcement comes the same day a spokesman said the system is expected to name someone in the next few days. Despite the rec uh, resignations of President Tim Wolf and Chancellor Arbo and Lofton, not all of the demands from concerned student 1950 have been met. Today, there's a new focus on staffing and diversity. KOMU 8's Jasmine Dell reports. On the Concerned Student 1950 demand statement, the group wants the University of Missouri to increase the percentage of black faculty and staff campus-wide to 10% by 2017 to 2018 academic year. When asked about the two-year goal, this is what the new interim vice chancellor had to say. I, I'm, I can't comment on whether uh, Concerned Student 1950s goals are reasonable. This is the most current race demographic available of University of Missouri employees. Currently there are 509 African Americans out of a total of 8,731 faculty and staff. Personally I like to see a lot of diversity in on the campus um, just for like a lack of prejudice. In order to meet the requirements assuming the same current number of employees there are possibilities of changes to meet the demand. If the University of Missouri would need to replace current employees, they would need to replace about 365 non-African American employees to keep the current demand. And in order to meet the demand of an additional staff without replacing any employees, the University of Missouri would have to hire an additional 405 employees on top of the current staffing. Jasmine Dell, KMU 8 News, Columbia. The interim vice chancellor says he believes the school should focus on the process, then results will follow. MU students received an email from MU police telling them how to report hateful or hurtful speech on campus. The email gives a number to call and directions on what details to give. MUPD says to take pictures of people involved if it can be done safely. One student on campus says the email was necessary but sent out too late. I'm glad we have this option, but I feel like this should have been common knowledge, and I feel like the university needed to do this a while back and like announce it or repeat announcing it like every semester, like, hey, just so you know, if you witness this stuff, it's ne never okay. The email reminds students hateful speech is not a crime, but the Office of Student Conduct can take action against students. This afternoon, the ACLU of Missouri released a statement saying, quote, no governmental entity has the authority to broadly prohibit hurtful speech or even undefined hateful speech or to discipline against it. A YouTube video brought more focus on the university when a student photographer was confronted by other students and one university professor in particular. I'm Media. Can I talk to you? No, you need no. to get out. 
You need to get out. No, I don't. You need to get out. I actually don't. All right. Hey, who wants to help me get this reporter out of here? I need some muscle over here. That's communications professor Melissa Click, along with other protesters, blocking a student journalist from taking pictures at the Carnahan Quad. The video has gone viral. It has caused some discussion online about whether or not the protesters and professor had the right to block the journalist. The dean of the School of Journalism issued a statement about the confrontation. It read, Click's courtesy appointment within the journalism school is under review. Some students have come together to petition for Click's resignation or her termination. Senior Mark Shearbecker shot the video. He says he had no idea his video would spark so much debate. The communication department released a statement reaffirming its support of the First Amendment. Concerned student 1950 members say that before the viral video was shot, photographer Tim Ty was acting aggressively. He disagrees, saying, I don't believe I was aggressive and I never intentionally swatted or shoved anyone. As a journalist, I need to document the scene, not alter it. However, many people there pressed against me and eventually shoved me. I attempted to stand still. Perhaps they interpret that as me shoving back. I would disagree with that characterization. A few protesters are still camping, and now they're welcoming the media. Today, members of Concerned Student 1950 were handing out flyers saying the media is important to tell our story and experiences at Mizzou to the world. Let's welcome and thank them. The group removed no media signs. Here's a look at what's happening right now. We have a live picture of Carnahan Quad where some of the tents are starting to be taken down as of this morning, but you can see most of those tents are still up. We'll continue to follow this story throughout the evening. We invite you to log on to KOMU.com. That's where you'll find the latest on our coverage of the campus uprising. We also have a photo gallery from yesterday's events. Now the news, an FBI investigation at a Boone County home forced nearby elementary students inside today. It happened at Cedar Creek Elementary. Both the Columbia Police Department and the Boone County Sheriff's Department were on the scene to assist the FBI with its investigation on Santa Barbara Drive. Neighbors say there were more than 30 vehicles on the street when officers went searching in one of the houses. A neighbor says he saw six or seven officers lined outside the homeowner's door. Two women sitting outside, handcuffed and him on the side of the building talking to an FBI agent, and I'd just be lined right back into my house after getting my phone. No word on what the FBI was investigating. We'll keep you updated as we get more information. A man attempted to break into a Columbia house this morning. It happened about 7 a.m. on Tessa Way when the man living there heard a noise. The burglar ran away. The man inside chased him. The suspect pulled out a handgun, got in a blue car, and drove off. Today, PROMO, the Missouri LGBT advocacy group, announced the Social Security Administration is recognizing same-sex marriage licenses for name changes. The organization says they brought the issue to Governor Nixon after same-sex couples saw delays in getting their names changed. In June, the Supreme Court ruled same-sex marriage bans were unconstitutional, making gay marriage legal in Missouri. President Obama is asking the Supreme Court to protect illegal immigrants from deportation. The executive order would keep the parents of U.S. citizens and legal permanent residents in the country along with immigrants who entered as children. It adds up to as many as 5 million people. 26 states oppose that order. The U.S. Senate passed a bill that will ban moving Guantanamo Bay detainees to the U.S. today. The revised National Defense Authorization Act passed 91 to 3 in the Senate and passed in the House last week. President Obama is not in favor of the bill, but has not threatened to veto it either. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest spoke about the president's disappointment at today's vote. And Russia's Athletics Federation president is rejecting the World Anti-Doping Agency's accusations that his country's athletes violate global drug restrictions in sporting events. The group released a report outlining widespread corruption and collusion by Russian leaders and, secretary agency, and security agencies that lead to a state-sponsored drug culture in their athletics. It recommended that all Russian athletes be banned from competing in international events, including the 2016 Olympic Games. The Russian sports minister says there was no evidence to support the accusations. 
Pope Francis outlined his vision for the church today. In a speech to the Italian bishops, Francis told them he wants a church that's humble and poor, not obsessed with doctrine or acquiring power. Pope Francis said Catholics need to realize they're living not in an era of change, but rather in a change of era. Nice weather today, but let's send it over to Kenton for a check of the forecast. Jim, thank you very much. Good. We head into the beginning and middle of next week as well. So certainly in 24 hours, be tuned in with us yep. once again. We'll be keeping an eye on the sky. For sure. Kenton, thanks. You're welcome. Kids soccer is adjusting its rules. What's changing and how it's supposed to help keep your kids safe. Youth soccer is adjusting its guidelines and trying to prevent concussions from headers. The U.S. Soccer Federation now prohibits players ages 10 and younger from heading the ball. The new rules say those 11 to 13 can only head the ball during games, not in practice. The new guidelines resolve a lawsuit from parents and players charging groups, including U.S. soccer, with negligence for not addressing the problem of head injuries. A new study finds obese children as young as eight show early signs of heart disease. Researchers used image tests to compare a small group of obese and average weight kids. They found 40% of the obese children had thickened muscles surrounding the heart, which could reduce the heart's pumping ability. Experts say heart problems while in childhood could lead to more complicated health conditions in the future. The shape of your body could impact the risk of death more than your weight. A Mayo Clinic study found average weight adults who carry belly fat have the worst long-term survival of any other group, regardless of body mass index. The data showed a normal weight person with midsection obesity had twice the mortality rate of people considered to be obese by BMI alone. And improving your leg strength could also help your brain. A new study looked at the thinking, learning, and memory skills of more than 300 female twins over a 10-year period. Researchers found leg power to be the best predictor of cognitive change when compared to any other lifestyle factors. The reason for the link isn't clear, but experts say it could involve changes in immune function, blood flow, or nerve singling. We have reaction to concerned student 1950 and its media attention. That's next in today's talk. Earlier, we told you about signs banning the media on the MU campus. The group Concerned Student 1950 took down the signs welcoming the media today. In today's talk, we wanted to hear what you had to say. We begin with Dirk. He says, good, because without the media, their protest would be a waste of time. Without the media, no one would hear about them and no one would care. Maybe they finally realize that you can't have it both ways. Tammy says, if the media would stay away from the, their tantrum would end. And Melina says, cool, but it's not about the media. MU has taken its next step. MU announced Chuck Henson is now the interim vice chancellor for inclusion, diversity, and equity. KOMU 8's Tyler Murray spoke to Henson this morning. Henson would not comment on the demands from protesters, but he told me this is not just a Missouri problem, but a nationwide issue. He says he hopes to help MU be more inclusive. It is unclear at this time whether or not Henson will be the permanent choice for the position, but Henson says he is only focused on what he can do to help heal now. Here's a look at what we're following for KOMU 8 News at 6. The lieutenant governor is chiming in on the controversy at MU. Peter Kinder says university faculty need to make changes. We have some developing news. We just received a letter of apology from Melissa Click. That's the communications professor you saw in that video earlier in the newscast. It said in part, quote, I have reached out to the journalists involved to offer my sincere apologies and to express regret over my actions. I regret the language and strategies I used and sincerely apologize to the MU campus community. We'll have more of that letter coming up at 6. 
It's going to be a warm night for us, 52 degrees only by sunrise on Wednesday morning. And then mid-afternoon and late afternoon, these showers and thunderstorms rolling through warm until then, 70 degrees for high temperature tomorrow. Any storm that does turn severe, these are the threats that we're going to be watching for. High damaging winds and even tornadoes are going to be the next threat that we are watching for as well. Tune in with us all day tomorrow. That's our time for now. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.